So I just want a show of hands. How many people here believe they know how to predict long-term sustainable happiness for yourself? Do not fret, you are not alone, actually. Take this picture, for example. Melissa, top right, just received her financial statement from Merrill Lynch. <laughs> she was thinking, I'm gonna work really hard, save my 401k, but yet, in the last couple of years, th this did not prove to bring her happiness. Lower right, Stella. She thought getting a boyfriend at an early age would be a good idea. This was a call a week later. Clearly, this was not the case. What's interesting is that, taking it back to this room, take a moment to think, what are your goals in your life? And if you ask yourself that enough times, and you ask yourself, you know, whatever it is, and why am I doing this, and why am I doing that, usually, it comes back to the same thing, happiness. So I thought this was really interesting, because physiologically, research shows that our brains are actually hardwired to seek happiness in life. Yet, as humans, especially with all this knowledge we have and all this access to information, we are super bad at predicting what will bring us long-term sustainable happiness. And there's a lot of research in this. For example, you hear always people saying, oh, when I achieve this, I'll be happy, or when I get there, I'll be happy. We always hear about lottery winners always being a little less happy after they actually win the money. And what's interesting also there is the inverse is true. Uh, there's been research done on people that lose functionality of their limbs. And ironically enough, enough, about a year later, they're actually happier than they were before. So this is when I started reflecting on myself. Why am I so interested in this concept of happiness? Because I was not actually the happy-go-lucky kid growing up. And so I started reflecting, and I thought back to when I started going to school. I, I went to Cal. Any Cal fans here? Yes. <laughs> Go Bears. Uh, I did this in Kansas City. No one raised their hand. I felt demolished. Um, <laughs> So anyway, I, I, got to, I got into Cal, uh, I was uh, you know, studying pre-med, my, my parents were happy, but I was not. <laughs> Asian American parents, you guys know, right? Doctor, lawyer. Uh, and so I started wandering and I found Asian American studies. And I was like, yes, I found something I'm passionate about. And then I was happy, my parents were not. I graduated and I finally knew what my parents were talking about. I had no job. So I started freaking out, I started calling every a uh, company that I knew of, and I've become, luckily for me, because of timing, the internet was born. I became a consultant. So I thought, wow, life is easy. You know, the money title status came just like that. But as everyone knows, the dot com busted. I got laid off. So I was the ultimate failure. All the stuff that meant something, money title status, meant nothing at all. So this is when I started wondering again. Uh, I don't know if anyone knows Delivering Happiness, the book. Tony Shader, the CEO, and I climbed Mount Kilimanjaro did a lot of soul searching in a weird way, metaphorically and physically. And we both came back out of the mountain, down the mountain, decided, let's pursue our passion. So on that high, I came back, and everyone has this moment in life, your ultimate low. The rug gets pulled from underneath you, and you have no idea what reality is anymore. My moment was when my dad passed away. So that forced me to face those questions that I didn't want to answer all my life. What do I want to do every day of my life that is meaningful to me? What would I do in my life without the fear of failure? So at that point, it was a green field. I started all over again. I just started doing things that felt like passionate to me, as meaning. So I started writing, I started doing design, I started making films, and, and through that process, knowing I still had to pay the bills, I, I became a consultant. And that's how I came across Zappos. How many people know about Zappos in the shop there? Okay, cool. All free shipping for all of you. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, everyone gets it. Uh, so that, to me, was an eye-opening experience because here's a company that actually believes in their employees, that wants to make them happy first and believes everything else falls behind it, naturally. And so fast forward a few years later, this was my course, and this is how I became running this company called Delivering Happiness. And so now, with... Uh, this has been a, just over the last year that we announced it. The biggest question that I get all the time is that, can this whole model of happiness really be applied in businesses and in general life? So taking this back to Zappos, this is actually a picture of Zappos located in Las Vegas. Uh, there's not a rainbow over it every day, but <laughs> funny enough. And I think about, when I think about Zappos, I think about this quote by Maya Angelou. Uh, people will forget what you said, what you did, but you'll, they'll never forget how you made them feel. 
And what's interesting is that it's a company that really is driven by this quote. It's really about what, how they make people feel. And so this is a picture of Zappos Warehouse in Kentucky. Uh, some yeah, might say it's the woman's dream, woman's dream closet. Some might say a man's ultimate nightmare. Uh, unless you're on John, maybe. But what's interesting is that there's so much technology built in this. It's an amazing, amazing fulfillment center. The fact that someone can order shoes on the East Coast at 8 o'clock at night after they put their kids to bed, and before they get into the car in the morning, the box is there. And so the, the fact they put all this technology in it is not the, you know, the reason so they can say that. The reason why they do all that and invest all that money into it is to, com is to really develop this the customer experience and the personal emotional connection that they have with customers so that they can create this wow experience of like, wow, are you serious? I, that just happened? Or if a customer service rep learns about one of their customers' uh, mother passed away, they'll send a card and send flowers and send uh, the UPS delivery man to pick up the shoes or, or deliver them. And so those are the wow experience that Zappos is constantly reinforcing. What's interesting, though, is that everyone thinks about customer service with Zappos, but their number one priority internally is their company culture. And the thought behind that is that if you make your employees happy, then stuff like great customer service and profitability actually comes naturally. And so that was sort of like an experiment in that sort of mindset. But what's really interesting is that there's been actual research done on this. And come, uh, sorry, books like uh, Good to Great and Tribal Leadership went to go look at what makes a company successful on a long-term basis. And what they found, it was nothing about what you would think, the numbers, operations. It really was about building a strong company culture and establishing a higher purpose for your employees to be inspired by. So while I was going on this track on the business side, I started to get interested in this whole topic of science of happiness. So when I talk about happiness, it's not the, you know, let's all hold hands and sing kumbaya happiness. Not that there's anything against that if you do that. But the science of happiness in terms of the research that's being done every day on, on what really makes long-term sustainable happiness. So there's a lot of frameworks that have been developed around this whole concept, but I only have time for this one. So this on the axis of time of what creates long-term sustainable happiness, the quickest one is what I call the pleasure or rock star. It's like the next high going out with friends one night, or you know, winning an award, those things give you a quick high. But unfortunately, they're not very sustainable, unless you're a rock star. The next one is what we call passion, in, in the terms of engagement and flow, engaging with the people around you, the friends that you have, your coworkers. And this concept of flow, where you're doing something and you're so into it that the time doesn't matter. It's just like 10 hours pass by, it's just but it feels like it feels like minutes because you're so passionate about it. And this, this whole concept of flow is actually developed by this gentleman, Mikhail Chick sent me hi. And uh, I, think, um, I think people say that he developed a concept when he tried to pronounce his name t 10 times really fast. <laughs> so, and the last most sustainable happiness, as research has shown, is actually having a higher meaning in your life. No matter what it is, what is your other calling, but just doing something that's beyond yourself. So taking that sort of concept and thinking about how that applies to your life, and then taking it back to my example of Zappos, it was interesting to me to show that the, there's these parallels, both on a business side and on a happiness side, that on the bottom of, of happiness and, and business, there's profits and there's pleasure. But what's interesting is the parallel is the same when you have passions on top of that and your ultimate higher purpose, whether you're a company or your individual self. And that's when it came to the revelation, revelation that there is a parallel. So going back to delivering happiness to a company, it started as a book. Uh, now it's been translated to, I think we're on to 18 languages. And what's been interesting with that is that we kind of expected business people to respond very favorably, but we didn't expect the non-business people. So moms were emailing us, uh, teachers, students, people working in government, hospitals. This mom said, uh, thank you so much for writing the bo this book. I'm now going to be the CMP, the chief managing parent of my household. To other people, where there was a trader in New York and said, thank you for writing this. I was on the verge of suicide. But now I see there's a glimmer of hope in being able to analyze how can I be sustainably happy. So as the book got translated in more and more language, we, uh, we just heard from around the world. And that was really a big dawning for me. If there's, 
this whole concept of happiness and the science of, there's no borders to it. It doesn't matter if you're religious. It doesn't matter how old you are. People were saying, yes, I want to apply these concepts to my life so that I can improve where I am in business or at work, I'm sorry, at home or in my community. And so that's why we launched this whole concept of delivering happiness, or what we're calling the delivering happiness movement. And our one goal is to continue to spread and inspire happiness in the world. To me, it just makes scientific sense from the research, it makes business sense from the studies we've done and, and what we've been doing at Zappos, and it just makes common human sense. So why wouldn't you want to make this world a happier place? And so we launched this about, see, March of this year. And since, this, since that time, we've heard from all over the world in a way that makes me truly believe this is the map of today. I can just only imagine what's the map of tomorrow, of people that really think that you can use this concept of happiness as a model in business, home, or community. And so this is my Tedster challenge. I always like to challenge Tedsters because they always love challenges. So this is a 30-day dare. Wherever you are in your life, happy, unhappy, wherever, I ask for the next 30 days to follow your passion more than you do regularly. Define, or if you already have your purpose, refine your purpose. Be true to yourself in the decisions that you make in your everyday life. And reconnect with relationships that have either been lost or severed, or, or I guess diminished along the way. And then after the 30 days, then I ask, can you guys reflect and see and whether or not you can go against the odds of determining and defining your long-term sustainable happiness. And so with that, I'm a little biased. I kind of believe that we can nudge this world to a happier place. Thank you very much.